Good afternoon, everyone. It's a bit weird because of the headphones. My name is Vera. I'm from SingSaver. Welcome to our panel on building wealth through property. A few days ago, I was playing with my niece, and I asked her, like, just out of curiosity, Tasha, if you have a lot of money, what kind of houses do you want to buy? And she said, I want to buy big houses, four of them. Like, why four? So I can buy a hotel, I can charge people rent after that. That sounds like a good investment strategy, only if you play Monopoly, right? <laughs> but you know what? Investments, property investment is not as clear cut as Monopoly. So today, in this panel, we'll be talking about building wealth through property. It is a very broad topic, and for sure, 20 minutes is not going to be enough to talk about it, but we'll try. We'll cover these three main topics. Is, pro is property investing, investing still viable today? What's the trend? Is it going to be to go up or is the price going to go down? Should we invest in local or overseas property? And with us today, we have two experts in property investment to share their vast experience and insights. Please welcome in welcoming uh, Marco Go, and of course, also with Eric Chiu. <clears throat> All right, let's jump into it. Uh, let's start with Marco first. Hey. Hi, Marco. So you have been investing in property for a while now. And do you think or you firmly believe that property investing is still very viable today? And why? I've been doing this for 25 years. And in 25 years, <coughs> I see property in Singapore going up and up. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, when there's a crisis, it might dip a little, but the up is still up. So if you ask me, given a fixed land size and with population increasing and economy getting better and no natural disaster, that's where I'll be putting my money. Mm. All right. So you are very optimistic and it's still going to keep on increasing. I am buying a lot. <laughs> yes, I put my money where my mouth is. All right. Thank All right. you. How about you, Eric? Hi, everyone. How are you today? Hey, all the, person, uh, all the per people who came here to support me, I want to thank you, everyone. So let's shout Hua Kui for a while. La. One, two, three. <laughs> okay. Hey, louder than the other side. La, huh? Okay, well, anyway, thank you. I want to thank everyone for inviting me here. Uh, so re regarding your question, I think most of us here, uh, I think most of the people here, you are employed. And uh, why going to property is very, very simple. It's because the only way to make money, the the good and not, not a lot of risk way is to own properties. Because I have never seen anyone rich and they don't mm. invest in properties. So I encourage everyone, I mean, most of you here, if you are HDB owners, EC, upgrader, or any profile, I encourage you to own two properties because that's the only way you can do because this is to avoid ABSD. So husband one, one wife one, that's the only, that's the max you can go. So I hope that everyone should start your planning because you can do two properties in one year. And um, yeah, so that's the one way to be rich in a very safe way. Thank you, come. All right, all right. So let's get to the basic a little bit, right? So from your experience, Eric, what do you think are the suggested requirements for before someone starts thinking about investing in property? Uh, I think uh, property investment is for everyone. Everyone starts somewhere. Uh, first, okay, the very easy way to start off your property investment and a sure win method is to buy BTO. Okay, a lot of people uh, misunderstand that uh, I don't like HDB. Okay, I, I, I do like HDB because a lot of people actually make their, their first part of gold from HDB. And after that, for those people who have more guts, uh, you can actually take the step of, uh, take a leap, leap of faith to sell your HDB and upgrade to two properties, but you do it one at a time. So, and most people actually gain a lot of money. Actually, most of people who buy properties, uh, they make a lot of, they, they make their first part of gold for a brand new flat, brand new EC, brand new condo. So I hope that everyone, you can, everyone can do that. It's just, whether do you want to do it? Lah. That's where I'm here to give you guts. <laughs> now. <laughs> All right. How about you, Marco? Uh, same thing. I come from a poor family. And my first spot of gold was a three-room flat in Passeris. At that time, uh, my wife and I sold the flat. We make about 100 plus thousand. And we thought there was a lot of money. Now, we taught our students who have BTO or who have flats before MOP to buy one or two more properties without paying ABSD 
so that the time comes for you to finish the MOP, you don't have one property to sell. You have two or three properties to sell. Now that you've got a big pool, big pool your, 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 your pot of gold will now be a lot bigger. You can choose to buy two landed properties, one condo, one landed, and two factory properties. It is all up to you. But before you buy a property for investment, always think, who is going to pay for the installment? If you are going to buy a new property and pray to God for three years while you pay for the installment, I don't call that a strategy. I call that a prayer. The way we buy property is upon owning the properties within three months. Everybody, how many months? Three months, correct. Three months later, you collect key. Someone must pay for the loan. And the someone who pay for the loan, not only pay for the loan, but also give you pocket money. If that is what you want, can you show me your hand? Thank you. That will be the way to financial freedom. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Marco. Now, we have established that our property investment is still very, very viable. It's a long-term investment. Yes. And I think one of the key questions that people always think about about investment is the P word, the price. Is it too low? Is it too high? Am I entering at the right price now? And in recent years, pre-COVID, COVID, now post-COVID, like Eric, what are the trend, recent trends that you have, you have seen uh, or changes in a post-COVID environment? And what do you predict will happen to the property price this year? Okay, what, what, one of the trends that is uh, getting more and more uh, common is the size of the property that people buy. So previously, like, you get a three beta is quite common. Oh, sorry, you get a four beta is considered luxury. But after COVID, you can see that people start to buy four beta. And of course, four beta makes more money than three beta. And, but then there are also people going to the five beta types of properties. Uh, for this year, actually, it's very easy to tell why. I mean, for the, for, I mean if, you know, if you follow me on Instagram and YouTube, uh, I just came back from Japan. And over that one or uh, one week plus, you can see that there's a lot of record prices. Serangoon 1.2, uh, even Serangoon 1.2 million. Bukit Panjang, Bukit Panjang? Yeah, Bukit Panjang. Second million dollar flats. Uh, then of course, you have your Topayo Crest, la, 4 beta, 1.2, 1.15, 1.1 million. So you see, these are a lot of... Uh, positive news for people who are already in the private property because if HDB were to go up so high, private will go up in tandem. Uh, uh, my Amor not bad. Uh. Uh, so that, that's the reason why you sh the more that you should, you, I, I mean, HDB is a stepping stone. You should, take a, uh, you should plan to sell and upgrade to a better value property. Yes, definitely the value of the property is uh, higher. Yes, you need to pay installment, but I believe most of the people who are work working here, uh, you, don't, you, you don't need to over leverage, get something comfortable. The second property, you don't need to think about the in, in, uh, installment because this is one of the, uh, uh, this is a very wrong way to think that. Because many of you, if you buy two properties, you will tell me, Eric, I, I need to pay two installment. Who pays the second property? Like what Marco say, renter la. What, you're going to buy your second property for, for, for holiday home man? No ma. So you buy your property, so you, you just need to manage the installment for your own stay. The second property will auto run one. The renter will cover all. Because you are young also ma. So that's my encouragement no? Do one at a time la. Yeah, Mar Marco, you have, you have been nodding a lot. You're in full agreement. Yeah, I've known him for a long time, man, <laughs> isn't it? Yes. Yeah many, yeah, many, many, many years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, property in Singapore, very interesting. Now, guys, please tell me, HDB 1 million, is it getting common? Yes. If HDB 1 million get common, condo 2 million, will it be common? Mm. If condo 2 million will be common, how about mass market landed property? Will 3 million become common? So if you follow our system, we will teach you how to, while you have a HDB flat before MOP, while you have a flat, buy a few more commercial properties so that when it's time for you to sell the MOP properties, through very careful calculation and very detailed planning, you have a chance 
to skip the condo route and straight away go to landed so that you have a chance to make a million dollars in three to five years. As fast as you can so that you can live a great life, so that you can spend time with your children before you grow, you, they grow up and so that you don't have to make the mistakes that I make and live a better life. All right, sounds, sounds like a, a very, very, you know, straightforward plan. Now, one of the biggest questions, how do you then spot the opportunities? I can answer any question one. <laughs> okay, I think it's very easy to spot opportunities. One way is to look at uh, what, are the up, what are the upcoming areas. And a very, 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 very easy way to make money is, uh, okay, uh, is to buy like future upcoming MRT stations, upcoming shopping mall, uh, nearby million dollar flats. Uh, so I, I, you, you all know I conduct classes. Ma. I give you some tips today. Uh, there, there are always very prosperous hip estates. Just go for them. Okay, so... And now I want everyone to start thinking, where's the next area that you want to upgrade? Uh, you will be, so some of you will talk about some OCR areas. So I just want to share with you, there are some very prosperous estates like, why Topayo always so hot? Why Queenstown always so hot? Why Clementi condos are so expensive? And why uh, Red Hill, la, up and coming area, Bidadari, la, why are they so getting more and more expensive? It's because of the demand from the million dollar flats owners because they make so much money from their HDB, and for EC owners also make a lot of money from that, it's very easy for them to upgrade. So please do not go to some estate where there isn't a lot of upgraders. I think if you, look, if you watch my Facebook Live, I, I, I did say a joke, hey, joke ah, you're chill ah, joke ah. Anywhere there is panjang cannot buy ah. <laughs> it laugh louder lah, it's a joke eh. Okay, okay but anyway, uh, yeah, so, okay, why again? Why Bukit Panjang cannot buy? Why, why Pasir Panjang cannot buy? Very, very easy, but Pasir Panjang easy is because there isn't people there, yeah. Sell to who? Okay, Bukit Panjang is a very special place. Uh, is a very special place. You have HDB upgraders, but sadly, the condos don't perform. So, you, so you see, it doesn't mean that oh, there's a lot of HDB owners. I can buy that. You also need to check whether is there demand because you always buy when you all, you you need to think about exit before you buy. It's not when you buy it, then you think, wow, Eric, uh, cannot sell, then, then how? Chui la. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So uh, I can talk forever. <laughs> your turn, your turn. Thank you, Eric. Uh, maybe this part, this is where Eric and I disagree. How many of you would like to have a different point of view? Can you just raise your hand or give me a nod? Thank you. Topayo is a great place. But do I want to buy a place to stay in Topayo? No. I will rent a place to stay in Topayo. So if I have the budget for two, two condominiums, where would I buy? I will buy where the energy are even higher than Topayo, which brings me straight to CBD area. During COVID, CBD rental dropped like flies. But when the economy goes up, CBD rental will fly. This is the best time to enter CBD properties. But don't move there and stay because the energy there is too high. You can't sleep. And moreover, your children study where? Inside CBD, man? So if you can get properties that can be rented at a high price, then what you do is that you can rent any properties in Singapore. So if your, student, if your children want to study in Bukit Timah, rent Bukit Timah. You may not be able to buy a condo in Bukit Timah, but you can rent, right or not? Or you can rent a landed. In my school, many of our students rent Bishan landed property. Why? so that their children can study at Bishan. But in their own personal capacity, they buy properties in high energy area where they do co-living and they rent out. Now, I agree with Eric that says that Pasir Panjang cannot buy. But Pasir Panjang is a great place for co-living. Why? Because the students that come, the professor that come, they will hang around for a long time. So in Pasir Panjang, I don't buy. I do lease to sublease because I'm not worried about selling, I'm only worried about collecting money. And when I can collect money, my company become active, I'll use my company to buy a lot of commercial properties where I ran out to people who repair aircon, repair cars, repair motorcycle, and therefore I make a lot of money. So that's different in opinion. Any way you cut it, sure can make money one, but you must stick to the basics. 
All right, very interesting school of thoughts. Right? Can I add? Sure, Eric. Okay, guys, uh, one more thing. Uh. To me, when you buy properties, first, there, are, there are two things. That we, when you buy properties, there's two things that you make money from. Number one is capital appreciation. Number two is rental income. So what is the most important? So which one is more exciting? Of course, both are good, mm. but you should focus more on capital appreciation because this is where the excitement gets you rich. Rental will not make you rich. It will only make you comfortable. So now ask yourself, why do people like to buy brand new flat? Is it because of the rental? No. Why do people want to buy EC? Is it because after MOP, they can rent out at a good price? No. It's all about capital appreciation. So I, I, I also want to disagree on one point. Why not, why not CBD? If you look at some of my videos, if you look at Marina One, all these areas, if you look at the performance of the area, people make money. Do people make a lot of money? Is it healthy? And, and you, you do see that not only people who make not unhealthy profits, people also lose money and they don't lose one leg, they lose two hands, they go home, the dog don't want to recognize the owner. So guys, make it, buying property is, is important, but there are so many choices. Choose the right one because the risk comes from your choice of property and not when you should buy. Wow, not bad. Uh. <laughs> Okay, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, yeah. All right, all right. I think we, we kind of almost run out, of, run out of time. Just one last question to our panelists. If we are going to invest overseas, where and why? And Marco? Never. <laughs> you all should buy and try, ma. Hey, Eric, you got free property to give away? I have free properties to give away in Phuket. Anybody wants? The property is developed by the best developer in Phuket, linked to the Taksing family. It's at the beach. At night, got turtle come up lay egg. My feng shui teacher said, good feng shui. Cannot rent, cannot sell. We got properties in Malaysia that you can see the Twin Tower. Cannot rent, cannot sell. I got property at Iskanda. Cannot rent, cannot sell. You still have a property, uh, Malaysia one? I sell, I lost money, and ah. that's the happiest day of my life. Yeah, <laughs> and me too. I lose money, give away, so nobody won. So never, I never go into overseas property because of a few fundamentals. Number one, who decides the master plan? In overseas, the master plan is decided by the private developer. They can change any time. Number two, when the government change, oh my God, the plan also change. But in Singapore, the master plan is by URA and our government is steady. Number three, our country, no earthquake, no tsunami, nothing. Whatever our government said, it happens. And that, that's good enough. Number four, with a land that's so fixed in size, population goes up. Come on, property price goes up naturally. I can't say the same for other countries. So sorry, I'm not an overseas country expert. Uh, so far, my experience has been nothing but painful. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. but in Singapore, anyhow buy also can make money one leg. <laughs> yeah, so Singapore better, I think. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Eric, completely agree with this. Hey, you all, you all got see my YouTube and IG. I keep look, I, I keep on making fun of overseas property. Uh. Okay, I, I think if you are really staying there, you are really the foreigner there, you will know what are the good news. But you, as Singaporean going to other people's country to buy property, you confirm true one la. I I do so many years, I never see, I seldom really, I seldom see people tell me, Eric, ah, well, I buy this, I make I, I make so much money in overseas property. Hen sao la. Very little. La. So guys, some of you here very harm one. Hey, sorry, 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 sorry. You, guys, you are, you are low risk taker. La. And you still dare to buy overseas, ah? You are, you have some you are somewhere wrong, yeah. So buy local first, like I mean home ground what? There's nothing wrong to buy home ground first. Come on guys, PR, a lot of PR also, they want to take citizenship in Singapore to buy local properties. Foreigners also hope that they can step in, uh, step, uh, buy something in, uh, in Singapore because of safety, la, uh, the, the, the safety, la, government, all these reasons. And new as Singaporean, you go and buy overseas property. Wow, I look down on news here. <laughs> But, but I think um, not all overseas property will lose money. If you like to buy overseas property, please go overseas and follow their guru there. I think there's a good chance they can help you through, yes. All right, all right. And, uh, no, Singapore, Singapore first, of first. course. No question about it. Singapore is always first. Hey, Singapore, yeah. you, so, you make so much money uh, until Simi see overseas property. All right, all right. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you so much, Marco. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for today. 
玩龙哥咧，做爽。